You ever plug in a UTP cable into a switch with the wrong cable pinouts, but it worked anyway? Well, that was Auto MDIX helping you out. In this video, we'll talk through all the details. So this topic of Auto MDIX, you'd find it in my books in what's currently Chapter 7. In that chapter, you'd see a first section called Understanding Auto Negotiation, and MDIX isn't that, but it's an automatic process that happens when the port comes up, so it seemed like the right place to talk about it. So it's not a long topic, but in this video, we'll talk through the idea of what it does, and then we'll talk about the operations, that is, how to config and verify the feature, and then I'll do a quick demo of seeing it happen on real switches. At the end, stick around and I'll talk about things as if you're part of my CCNA study group and I'll give you a little advice about how to go about reviewing later once you've fin finished with the video. All right, let's jump in and do it. To begin this topic, we need to review a few things from when we talked about cable pinouts and cabling, all right? So with 10 and 100 megabit per second ethernet created back in the 1990s, if, say, you've got a PC on the left and a switch on the right and a cable, one cable between them, if we take a blown-up view of that, a more detailed view, on the PC side, there'd be a transmitter and there'd be a receiver, and likewise on the switch side. But we want to connect the transmitter to the receiver on the opposite end, like that. So inside the cable, we'd use one pair of wires, say the green ones, to create an electrical circuit. And because it's connected to the transmitter in the PC, it would transmit data over to the receiver side to transmit bits, in this case, left to right in the drawing. And then similarly, we'd have this second pair, in this case orange, that would be used to create an electrical circuit. The transmitter would vary the electrical signal to transmit bits over right to left over to the PC. So that happens with 10 and 100 megabit per second Ethernet, and we've got two different ways of data transfer. So that was great. Then when we got to gigabit Ethernet by 1999, there were four pairs needed, and electronics had improved, so the folks that made this up said, hey, we can transmit in both directions over a single pair, and they needed that to go you know, 10x faster to get to gigabit Ethernet. So the same PC and switch, but now with a gigabit interface. For each of the four pairs, they could both transmit in both directions. So think of it as a transmitter receiver, transceiver, on each end on each pair, and they can transmit both ways. All right, so that's the setup then to talk about what pins connect where. So those are the positions, the numbered positions inside that RJ45 connector. So with the original 10 and 100 megabit per second Ethernet, remember those? So with a transmitter only connected to receiver only at the top, that first twisted pair inside the connector, we used the pair at pins 1 and 2 on the left, and we want to connect that over to the switch. Now the switch, knowing that the PC is using the pair at pins 1 and 2, connects its receiver to the pins 1 and 2 on its end of the cable. And likewise, the switch, knowing that the PC is wanting to receive using the pair that's connected to pins 3 and 6, transmits on the pair at pins 3 and 6. So that's what we call a straight-through pinout. That is, the wire at 1 connects to the wire at 1 on the other end, 2 connects to 2 on the other end, and so on, 3 to 3, 6 to 6. So if you looked at a drawing with color coding there, you can see all the wires match up in a straight through cable, one to one, two to two, three to three, and so on. So just a little more review before we get to auto MDIX. So we've got that PC and its logic on the left and the switch and its logic on the right, but we needed to think about the rest of the devices in the world, right? So the PC, there'd be servers and laptops, they act the same way in terms of what pins their ethernet cards use. And interestingly, routers and wireless access points and IP phones also act like PCs, endpoints, in terms of what pins they use on their Ethernet NICs. The only things that act like switches are switches, like this switch icon is for a Layer 3 switch, Layer 2 switch, so switches, and its predecessor called a hub, which you really shouldn't bump into in real life day, today. All right, So think switches in that right-hand column and pretty much everything else on the left. So if you've got a PC-like device from this column and a switch on the other column and you connect them, then a straight-through cable makes sense. But what if you have two like devices that connect, like two switches as in this drawing? Well, if we think about what happens with the 10 and 100 megabit examples, 
if we used a straight through cable, that would connect the pair at pins one and two. It would connect the receiver function on each switch port and then the transmitter function on that same switch port. And that's not correct. We want to match the transmitter to the receiver on opposite ends. All right, so that doesn't work. What we need is to cross the pairs. All right, so to cross the pairs, what we want to do is have the first solution that existed in the universe, which is this idea of a crossover cable. The cable itself crosses those pairs. So we get a cable that's wired like you see in this more generic drawing at the bottom, but we've got our two switches, and we've got this cable that connects the pins one and two at one end of the cable to pins three and six on the other. So those are crossed. And then pins three and six on the left-hand side connect over to pins one and two on the right-hand right -hand side, so it crosses that pair. That's great for 10 and 100 megabits per second. And then for gigabit, which uses four pair, you'd swap the other two pairs as well, and that's your crossover cable. And that is a solution that works and works fine. You just have to pick the correct cable pinouts. Now let's talk about the thing we haven't covered yet, and that's auto MDIX. Here's the long name for it spelled out here at the bottom. So auto MDIX, it's going to do the crossover for you automatically by sensing the need for the crossover. So let's just say you've got this one switch port on both sides, and the drawing again has a more detailed view where we see each of the pairs. And in this case, the cable's a straight through cable, so we've got pins one and two connected to pins one and two on the other end, three and six connected to three and six on the right, so we need to cross those over. So what Auto MDIX does is when the port comes up, it does out-of-band signaling, much like Ethernet auto negotiation, figures out that, hey, our receivers are connected and our transmitters are connected. We need to swap those pairs. So internally in circuitry, it swaps the pairs. So now the physical link will work. Yep, that's what it does. Happens great. You don't see it happening. It comes up and works. So life is good. In fact, it's been around since Gigabit Ethernet came out, which technically was in 1999. So it's been around quite a long time. It's on by default. So it turns out that many installations, they use it by default, and they have a standard of using straight-through cable pinouts everywhere for their UTP cabling. Then use auto MDIX. So for instance, all these links between switches in here, they might well use at your installation straight-through cabling pinouts. And they've been working all along because Auto MDIX did its job and swapped the cable pairs, noticing that each time the link comes up. By the way, for those of you that do have the books, I hope you've been enjoying the organization of the videos that match the books. If you've been thinking about adding the books, if you would use the link here or the QR code and click the product link there, then it turns out if you buy at Amazon or CiscoPress.com, they end up giving me a few dollars back from your sale at no additional cost to you. It's a great way to support the channel, and I'd very much appreciate it. All right, back to the content. So how do we implement this stuff? Well, it's on by default, and it works pretty good. So honestly, in real life, you could mostly ignore it. But for exam prep, let's talk through it. So the function works if it's enabled on at least one end. So it's one end or both ends. So I've made three examples, and I'll use this in the demo here in just a moment. Two switches, and they've got their ports 7 connected, ports 8 are connected, ports 9 are connected. And we've turned it off on both ends on port 9. And by the way, in this case, you would normally want to use a crossover cable if you're trying to do the crossover with the cable. But in this case, I plugged in uh, straight through cables in each case, so we could test out auto MDIX. So only in the case where it's turned off on both ends will the link fail. So it's dis if it's disabled on both ends, then the link fails. And the way we know that is by looking at the interface state. So the show interfaces command will show the interfaces in a down and down state, and the single word code for the state will be not connect. All right, and we'll see that in demo as well. So just talking through it again, the command to enable it is MDIX auto. That's the default. To disable it, it's no MDIX auto. So in my examples, no MDIX auto is a subcommand under gig 109 to disable the feature. The first two interfaces, it's enabled, but you don't see the command in the output of show running config. Why is that? Show running config almost always, with some exceptions, but almost always, if there's a default config setting, it just doesn't appear. So it implies here 
that the default of MDIX Auto is configured under each of these. One last little caveat, iOS documentation does mention that if you statically set the speed on an interface, it may break Auto MDIX. But honestly, I've not been able to break Auto MDIX by setting speed. So um, that, that may be a historical reference in the documentation that hasn't been removed. But just be aware, if you see a speed command, danger, danger, it might mess with your Auto MDIX behavior. Now, verification of auto MDIX can be a little tricky. First off, there is a command that will show you directly if it's enabled or not on an interface. Here's that long command. But that's a little tricky. First, you can't practice it in Cisco Packet Tracer or in CML because it's not supporting CML. It means you're less likely to even find it in lab questions on the CCNA exam. So what we need is a way to verify whether MDIX is on or not that we can rely on. And those ways are indirect. So here's what you have to do. You look at the interface state. So if the interface comes up, that is, it worked, and if it doesn't, it failed, and if you know that the only cabling problem was the wrong pinouts, then that tells you something about whether auto MDIX was up or not. That is, if you use the wrong pinouts and it works, then auto MDIX was there helping you out. And if you use the wrong cable pinouts and it fails, it means auto MDIX was not there to help you out. You can also look at the configuration. Non-default configuration settings should show up in the output of show running config. So look over here at this example on the right. Two of the interfaces have no interface subcommands appearing in the output of show running config, so they have default settings, whereas this third interface, GIG109, has a non-default setting of no MDIX auto. What does that mean? This third interface has MDIX disabled, the non-default setting, but the first two have MDIX enabled, the default setting. So if you get comfortable with that idea, as seen in that example on the right, then you can quickly look at the config and figure out, well, where is MDIX enabled or not? And if it's disabled on both ends of a link, that's the danger, where you've got it disabled on both ends, it won't make up for an incorrect pinout on a cable. So for this demo, I'm using Switch 1 and Switch 2, the same ones in that example I've been using repeatedly talking about auto MDIX. And over here on Switch 2, I'm going to uh, up arrow a few times and look at the config. And I started the output beginning with the GIG 107 interface. So here, interface GIG 107 has no non-default configuration command showing up, so it's got all default. But here on ports 8 and 9, they've got one non-default command, that is no MDIX auto. So per my design, switch 2 has MDIX turned off on ports 8 and 9. If I go over to switch 1 now, and I up arrow a few times and do the same show running config command, but just starting the output with port 7, I see here that only port 9 has MDIX turned off. So what does that mean? Port 7, it's on on both ends. Port 8, it's on on switch 1 only. Port 9, it's off on both ends. So what does that mean? Well, it should mean, at least if things work out like we've been talking about, that things are down on just that one link, port 9. So let's see. Hey, let's uh, do a show int status. Yes, I'm looking at my notes to make sure I cover all the steps. And if I scroll down here starting at gig 107, I see I've got connected and connected on the first two links and not connect, meaning it's down on that third link. All right, so that matches up with things, but there's nothing that says MDIX figured out that, right? It, it could even be some other problem or multiple problems. We just know that the link is not connect on gig 109. Now, I had mentioned that there aren't any mainstream commands that will directly verify the auto MDIX status, but there's an obscure one. So mainstream commands. Here on switch one, show interfaces, and we'll look at gig 107 that has auto MDIX on. And if we do this command and you just visually scan, you'll discover that there's no mention of the word MDIX. But if you don't want to have to scan everything, if we up arrow, and pipe that over and in, use the word include. It's a way to search through that text or have iOS search for you. So say include MDIX, it will search for the letters MDIX in lowercase, and we don't see any lines of output to that, meaning iOS did not find lowercase MDIX in there. 
And if I up arrow and try uppercase MDIX, again, it's not going to be found either. So at least show interfaces doesn't tell us anything about it. So of all the commands you would normally expect to see in CCNA, none of them tell us that MDIX is on or off. But one that will tell you is the show interfaces command. And I'm going to now look at gig 109 because that's the one where MDIX is off that we're going to fix here in a second. But we're going to use transceiver properties as additional parameters and we hit the jackpot. All right. So what do we see? We see the administratively set settings for speed and duplex. We see the administratively set settings, that is the configuration for auto MDIX, which is what we were looking for. We see the operational setting for MDIX down here, seeing that it's off as well. So this is telling us that auto MDIX is off, and we know that from looking at the config earlier. All right, so if you want to directly verify it, you can use this command, but just be warned. Um, this command is on some real switches, but even the version of the switch software that's used on the CCNA exam doesn't support this command. So get comfortable with the idea of needing to rely on looking at those config commands, whether you don't see the MDIX auto command, that's the default, or do see the no MDIX auto command. All right. So to wrap this up, let's configure that GIG109 interface. Interface gig 109, and let's add back the MDIX auto command so that one end of the link, at least, has MDIX enabled. Get out of config mode, and here, just a second, we should see some messages saying that the interface came up over there on switch 2 on the right. We also see log messages about the interface coming up, and a show interface's status should reveal that gig 109 is now in a connected state. So it's a pretty short topic study group. So here's the deal. The section in the book, Using Auto MDIX on Switch Interfaces, it's also short in the book there. So reading the book section, optional to go find that. If you do have a couple of Cisco switches around, I highly encourage you to try these commands when you are next in those switches. But you can also do a quick ad hoc lab. I've not made a separate video for it. It's pretty straightforward. It's basically do what I just showed you in the demo. Take a couple of switches, plug in straight through cables on three links like these, and turn it off on one end in the middle link and on both ends on the far right link, leaving it on on the far left link and see what happens. What should happen is the far right link fails. And in fact, you can do exactly that in Cisco Packet Tracer. And in my testing, it works as it's supposed to. Uh, so you could just uh, kick the tires a little bit with these commands and make sure you're clear on those. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you got into that UTP cabling and pinouts and thought, oh, I've forgotten all this and you want to go back and review, click on that video that's shown up on the left-hand side. And over on the right, that's the next instructional video that's talking about some additional interface subcommands that we've not talked about yet. So click there for the next one of those. Hey, thanks for hanging out. I'll talk to you soon.